Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazdar, and today is third of uh, May, two thousand and twenty-two. Right now, I am uh, with the eleven Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is D Maths four zero two four. Today, we have set our hearts to solve a paper one, and we have selected May June two thousand twenty-one to paper. This is the second uh, video on this paper. In my first video. we have solved from question number 1 to question number 13 in this session we will start from the question number 14 and we will try to complete up to question number 25 so let's hope that we can accomplish this target so let's start this paper and here we go so the question number 14 we are starting from the question number 14 So the question is coming up on your screen. In 2017, the population of the Egypt was 9750000. Write this population in the standard form. So uh, your decimal is here at the end. So just move this decimal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven steps to the left, and it will become. Uh, Here you can see nine point seven five x plus seven. So that is our answer. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. Nine point seven five x plus seven. Our answer is right. So let's go back to the question. Then he says the population density of a country is the number of people per square kilometer. In two thousand seventeen, the population of the Indonesia was two point six two x plus eight. Correct to three significant figures. The area of the Indonesia is two x plus six kilometer square. Correct to one significant figure. Calculate and estimate for the population density of Indonesia. So um, very simple. Uh, population divided by the area. Population divided by the area. Two point six two x plus eight divided by two x plus six. So with two you can cancel it. One point three one x plus eight minus six will be two. So it's one thirty-one people per square kilometer. So let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says? One thirty-one. Okay, so our answer is right. Okay, so we are going to the next question. Here we got the next question. He says uh, this is a shaded portion and it is bounded by three lines. This line, which is which is uh, horizontal, its equation will be y equals to three. This line, which is vertical, its equation will be y. Sorry, x equals to five, and this inclined line, its equation we have to find out. So we will use two points. I will take this point zero comma one, and I will take this point, which is five comma six. And with the help of these two points, I can find the equation first of all, and then I will write the inequality. The shaded area is below this line. So their question is: the shaded region is defined by the Three inequalities. Find these three inequalities. Okay. So let, let me show you. I have done this, and here we go. Line number one is a is a horizontal line. Its equation is y equals to three. So the uh, because the area is above the shaded area is above this line. So the crocodile's mouth will be towards the y because the area is above this horizontal line. So y is greater than or equal to three. Then we have a vertical line, uh, which whose equation is x equals to five. The area, the shaded area, is to the left side of this vertical line. So uh, we will put the crocodiles back towards the x. So x is less than or equals to five. Then the third line is an inclined line, and we have to first of all find the equation of this line. So we will take two points on that line. I have taken two point zero comma one and five comma six. First of all, we will find the gradient of this line. Formula is y two minus y one divided by x two minus x one, and that will be six minus one divided by five minus zero, and that will be five by five, and that will be one. So, a coin of the line we can find the formula we I use for, for finding the coin of a line is y minus y one equals to m bracket x minus x one. Here, x one y one will be the first point, its coordinates, and the m will be the gradient. So y minus one equals to one bracket x minus zero. So y minus one will be x, and so y is equals to x plus one. So that's the equation of that that line. But the shaded area is below that line. So the crocodile's back will be towards the y. So the inequality will be y is less than equals to x plus one. So let's check the marking scheme. 
So our answers are right. Okay. So we are going to the next question. This was, that was a three marks question. The next question is question number 16. He says that why, sorry, Q is a subset of the P. Q is a subset of the P. When the Q is a subset of the P, it means all the members of the Q are present in the P. And the P is larger than Q. P, P has some members which are not in the Q. So Q, in the Venn diagram, in terms of the Venn diagram, when Q is a subset of the, uh, of the P, it means that the Q is inside the P, a circle inside the P. Then he says P and uh, P intersection R is equals to phi. Phi means the null set. It means that there's nothing common between the P and the R. So R will be here somewhere, make a circle. And there's nothing overlapping between the P and the R because there is nothing common between them. Complete the Venn diagram to show the set Q and R. So let me show you my diagram. So hopefully you understand, you see the Q is inside the P and the R is a separate, okay? So there is nothing overlapping between the P and the R. Hopefully you understand. Let's check the marking scheme and the marking scheme. Okay, our answers are right. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number 17. Here are the first four terms of a number sequence. So find the fifth term. Okay, so look at this pattern. Try to catch this pattern. This is the first line, so it's one square plus three equals to four. The second line is two square plus eight equals to 12. Three square plus 13 equals to 22. And four square plus 18 is equals to uh, 34. So if you look at this pattern, it's one square, two square, three square, four square, five square. This you have added uh, five, then you added five, then you again added five. So I can find the fifth term very easily. So the fifth term will be five square plus add five in 18. So that will be 23. So that will be five square plus 23. You see, there is no formula involved. I have just, I have just tried to catch the pattern. So let me show you the fifth term of this sequence. And here we go. So the fifth term of that sequence will be five square plus 23 equals to 40, 25 plus 20, 23. That will be 48. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. And the marking scheme says 48 is the right answer, sir. Okay. So the next part is they say find an expression in the terms of n for the nth term. You see, for this sequence, uh, one square, two square, three square, four square, five square. So it will be n square. For this sequence, three plus, plus five, eight plus five, 13 plus five. It's an arithmetic sequence. And we can find its nth term. The formula is a plus d bracket n minus one. And then we will add both the nth terms. So let me show you how I have done this. Okay, so here we go. So the first sequence there is one square, two square, three square, four square, five square, and so on. So the nth term will be n squares, very simple. And the second sequence there plus uh, that number, that's three, eight, 13, 18, 48. So I wrote here 48, this is not 48, it is 23 actually. Okay, so uh, mark this mistake, this is 23, not 48. So here you are adding five, again adding five, again adding five, again adding five, this number is supposed to be 23. Okay, it's a, it's a arithmetic sequence. You can find its nth term. The formula is A plus D bracket N minus one, where A is the first term, D is the common difference. So A is three and the common difference is five. So A plus five bracket N minus one, it will be uh, three plus five N minus five. So it will be five N minus two. So the nth term of that sequence will be n squared plus five n minus two. So n squared plus five n minus two. So let's check from the marking scheme. n squared plus five n minus two is the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. And uh, the next question coming up on your screen. Okay, so here we have a speed time graph. He says, uh, the diagram is the speed time graph for part of a car's uh, journey. And here uh, it has shown uh, for from zero to 200 seconds, the car accelerated, then it's moved with a constant speed, then it decelerated. He says that deceleration of the car between T140 to T200 is 0 0.2 meter per second square. Find the value of the V. Okay, if you want to find the value of the V, okay, you know the deceleration here, 
is equals to the slope of this speed time graph here. So I will take two points here. Uh, one is 140 comma V, the other point will be 200 comma zero. And I will apply the formula of the gradient because the gradient of the speed time is equals to the deceleration. And that is equal to 0 0.2 meter per second square, but I will put a negative with it because it's deceleration. So let me show you how this is done. And here we go. So here we have zero, 140 comma V and 200 comma zero. So it will be zero minus V divided by 200 minus 140 equals to minus 0 0.2. Why are we putting a negative with the minus uh, with the 0 0.2 because deceleration. So minus V divided by 60 is equals to minus 0 0.2 minus minus will be canceled. So V will be equals to two by 10 multiply 60 and that will be 12, 12 meter per second. So that is our answer. Let's check from the marking scheme. What it says 12 meter per second is the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next part of this question. The car travels a total distance of 1800 meter in 200 seconds. Find the value of the T. So in 200 seconds, it has moved how much? Uh, 18, 1800 meter. So you know the distance traveled in the speed time graph is equal to the area under the speed time graph. So this shape is in the shape of a trapezium. So this side is 200, this side is 140 minus T. The height of the trapezium is V, whose value we already know. So let's let me show you how I have done this. So the area, the distance traveled is equals to the area under the speed time graph. And so let's reduce the size a little bit. So uh, because the shape of the graph there is in the shape of the trapezium, and we can find its area, and you know the. Uh, it is one by two into V into one side is 200. The other parallel side is 140 minus T and that is bracket close equals to 1800. So you will have, uh, so the value of the V is 12. So 12 divided by two in bracket 200 plus 140 minus T bracket close equals to 1800. So 12 and two is canceled six. So 200 plus 140 is 340 minus T bracket close equals to 1800. Take this six to the other side, it will divide with the 1800 and you will have 340 and minus 340 minus T equals to 300. So uh, take the T to the other side, bring this 300 to this side. So 340 minus 300, that's 40. So the value of the T is 40. So let's check from the marking scheme if our answer is right or not. 40 is the right answer, sir. Hopefully you understand how this has been done. Okay, so this is, that's it. Okay, now we have the question number 19. Here is the P, here is the P which they have shown and try to understand from the tail to the head. You move two steps on the X axis and one steps up. So it's uh, two steps to the right and one step up here. To one step to the right and three steps down. That's Q. Okay, what is the question? Vector P and Q are shown on the grid. On the grid, draw the vector 3P. So if you want to draw the 3P, so you will start, for example, you start from here. One, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. So this will be the 3P. Okay, let me show you. I have drawn this, okay. So here on your screen, I hope you can see, I started from here because the P is two steps to the right, one steps up. Okay, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. So that's my tail, that's the head, and this is three P. Hopefully you understand how I have drawn this. Okay, the next question they want us, uh, let me show you the... The next part, they want us to find out uh, P, uh, sorry, Q minus P. Q minus P. This is Q already there, so draw like this. For example, start from here, one and one, two, three. So this will be the Q. Minus P will be, you move two steps to the uh, left and one step down. That will be the minus P. So very easy. So... Okay, so here you see I have one and one, two, three, that is Q. And then I have to draw minus P. Minus P will be two steps to the left and one step down. So that is minus P. 
And when I join the tail with the head here, so that will be Q minus P. Hopefully you understand this question is coming from the vectors of the, uh, from the D4 book. So that was question number, uh, let's check what the marking scheme says. Okay, so here you have those diagrams and our answers are right, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number 20. A plan of a house is drawn to a scale of one ratio 50. On the plan, the floor area of the kitchen is 30 centimeters square. Calculate the floor area of the real kitchen. Give your answer in square meters. Okay, so this is map and this is actual. Okay, and it's given in the ratio. So very simple, it's very simple. Okay, so the scale is given map ratio actual is one ratio 50 on the map on the on the actual. On the map, something is uh, he gave you the area. Let me let me check again. Yeah, the area is given. Okay, okay, okay. So because the map scale given one ratio 50, that is not for the area, that is for the length. So before you use it for finding the area, uh, you have to square it. So that's why you see I have done here one square and 50 square. The area on the map is 30 centimeters square. The question is how much will be the actual area? So it will be one by 30 equals to two to, uh, square of this, 2,500 by x cross multiply, and you get 75,000 centimeters square. So because we want the answer in the meter square, in one meter we have 100 centimeters, so square means 100, 100. So divided with the 10,000, so you get 7.5 meters square. So the area in actual of the kitchen is 7. Point uh, five a meter square. So let's check the answer. 7.5 is the right answer, sir. And let's go to the next question. Okay, here we have a question coming from the chapter number four of the D3. Uh, question is on the indices. So simplify bracket 2x squared divided by x5 bracket close raised to power minus three because the power is negative. So we can, we will flip this fraction. We will reciprocate this fraction and then we will solve it. So here we go. So first of all, reciprocate this fraction, the power will become positive. So X5 divided by two X squared. So this will become X raised to power three divided by two raised to power three. So this power is for both of them. The power of the power multiplies with each other. So X raised to power nine and two raised to power three will be eight. Hopefully you understand. Let's have a look at the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says. Yeah, x raised to power nine divided by eight. That's the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are going to the question number 28. The question is about the functions. He says there are two functions given. F of x is equals to four bracket three minus x and g of x is equals to five bracket three x minus two bracket close divided by x. Their first question is find the f inverse of x. Okay, so we will suppose that f of x is equals to y, and then x will be equals to f inverse of the y. And then let me show you how this is done. Okay, so we will suppose that f of x is equals to y. And in the place of f of x, I will put this formula that is 12 minus 4x equals to y. And then I will make the x subject of the formula. I took it this and brought the y here. So 12 minus y equals to 4x. This 4 will come here downstairs. So 12 minus y, the whole thing divided by 4 is equals to x. So x is equals to 12 minus y divided by 4. So in the place of x, I can write f inverse of y. So f inverse of y is equals to 12 minus y divided by 4. So I will change the variable here. So it will become f inverse of x equals to 12 minus x divided by four. So this is how you find the inverse of a function. This question is coming from the chapter number two on the D from the D3. Okay, the next question, question number, let's, let's first of all check the answer. Okay, 12 minus x by four, that's the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next question. Uh, the next part of the question, it's the B part, he says, solve G of facts equals to six. You write this formula and that make it equals to six and then find the value of the variable there, the X. 
a very simple and a straightforward question. He said, it is given that the G of X is equals to six. Okay, so we have five bracket three X minus two, the whole thing divided by X equals to six. So that X will go to the other side. So it will multiply. So you will have 15 X minus 30. It should be not minus 30. So, uh, So um, sorry for there was a little mistake in my working, so I have corrected it. So five into three x minus two divided by x equals to six. So this x will go to the other side to multiply. When the five will multiply, it becomes fifteen x, and five multiplied with the two is minus ten equals six x. Bring this six x to this side. Take this minus ten to the other side. So you will have fifteen x minus six x equals to ten, and we will have nine x equals to ten. X will be ten divided by nine. X is ten divided by nine, so that is one whole one by nine. So this is how you will do this question, and I hope that you have understood this. Uh, when I, I worked, I just made a little mistake, so I have corrected it. So hopefully you understand. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. It's ten by nine is the right answer. Okay, so that was question number 22. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number 23. Three marks question expressed as a single fraction in, in, in its simplest form. And here you have five divided by two X minus one minus three divided by X plus one. So we will uh, multiply uh, this with a numerator here with the denominator here. I will multiply this with the numerator and the denominator. I will try to make their uh, their same, uh, their denominator same. So let me show you. Okay, so I will take these both of them here. So this will multiply here, five into X plus one, four, minus three bracket two X minus one. So it will become five X plus 20 minus six X plus three. And it will become uh, 23 minus X divided by this. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. If our answer is right, okay, 23 minus X and divided by two X minus one and divided by X plus, yeah. So our answer is right. Yeah, our answer is right, sir. Okay, so that was a three marks question. Next question coming up on your screen. He says, P is the point H comma seven. The P lies on the line three Y plus two X equals to five. Find the value of the H because this point is on this line. So it's X and Y value will, will satisfy this equation. So in the place of Y put seven, in the place of X put H and find the value of the H. Very simple and straightforward question. So as it's coming up on your screen and here we go. So three into seven, 21 plus two into H equals to five, two H will be equals to five minus 21 and H will be equals to minus 16 by two and the H will be equals to minus eight. So P is basically, uh, P is basically, you know, um, minus eight comma seven. Have a look at the marks. Minus eight is the right answer, sir. That answer is coming up there, you see. Okay, so we are going to the next part. And the next part is, uh, he says the line L is perpendicular to the line this and passes through the point P, find the equation of the line. So first of all, because that line L is perpendicular to this line from this equation, I will find the gradient of this line. And then I will find the gradient of the perpendicular line. And I will use the point P whose, whose coordinates are minus seven, minus eight comma seven. And I will very easily find this equation. It's a four mark question. So let's, let's solve it. So first of all, because uh, he says that that line L is perpendicular to the three Y plus two X equals to five. So from this line, uh, this equation, I can find the equation, uh, find the gradient of this line. So the gradient of this line will be y equals to minus two x divided by three plus five by three. So the gradient is minus two by three. So the gradient of the perpendicular will be the reciprocal of this gradient and sign will be changed. So the gradient of the perpendicular will be three by two. And that line passes from the point minus eight comma seven. So I will use that point and this gradient and I will find the coin of the line. The formula for finding the coin of the line is y minus y1 equals to m bracket x minus x1. 
why I will put that point y minus seven equals to three by two bracket x plus eight. So two will multiply here and two y minus 14 is equals to three x plus 24. So two y is equals to three x plus 24 plus 14 and two y is equals to three x plus 38. That will be the equation of the gradient. Equation of the, sorry, perpendicular. Uh, to that line and passing to the front, uh, passing to the point B. I hope you understand. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. He says Y will be equals to three by two X plus 19. If you bring uh, this two to this side, it will become three by two and 38 divided by two is 19. So our answer is right, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question, that was a four mark question, you remember? So next question is question number 25 showing up on your screen. He says, okay. He says y is equal, a is equal to two zero minus three minus one. Evaluate two a minus bracket minus five, four, zero, three. So you will have uh, put just the value of the a here, multiply two with the a and then subtract these two. Very simple, straightforward question. Okay, so let me show you how I have done this. Okay, so here we go. So we put the value of the A here. That's the, this two will multiply with every member of this A. So you have four, zero, minus six, minus two, minus this thing. So corresponding members will be subtracted from the corresponding member. So you will have four minus minus five, that will be four plus five, and that will give you nine. Zero minus four, that will be minus four. Minus six, minus zero, that will be minus six. And minus two, minus three, that will give you minus five. So this is how you do this question and let me show you this. The whole question is showing up on your screen. Nine minus four minus six minus five is the answer. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. Nine minus four minus six minus five is the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next part and that is, uh, he says, find the determinant of the A. We know, and then he says, find the inverse of A, okay. So it's very simple. We want to find out the determinant of the A and then we want to find out the inverse of the A. Okay, so determinant, the matrix A is given to us. Multiply these two with each other, then you put a negative, then multiply these two with each other. So two into minus one minus minus three into zero and that will be minus two minus zero plus zero and that will be minus two. So the determinant is minus two. Let's have a look. Determinant A is minus two. So our answer is right, sir. Then the question is find the A inverse. Okay, you want to find out A inverse. The formula for the A inverse is A inverse is equals to one by A determinant into the adjoint of A. So you will have one by minus two into minus one, zero, three, two. And in the adjoint, you know, you remember in the adjoint what we do, we change uh, their location with each other. And there on this diagonal, we change the signs. So you will see we have changed the, okay, their position we that has been changed and their signs has been changed. So your that will be the a inverse. You can bring this minus two inside or you can keep it outside. It does not make any difference. Okay, so our answer is right. So question number twenty five and it's D part. And the D part says, find the matrix X uh, where X A is equals to, uh, you know, X A is equals to four uh, minus two. So I will bring this A to this side. I know its value when it will come to this side, it will become its, in, its inverse. We know its inverse value. And because it's on the second position on the right, uh, on the left side, so its inverse will be also written on the second position on the right side. This is a very, very important concept. Okay, so uh, we will uh, bring this to this side. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, here we go. So um, X A equals to this. Okay, so X will be equals to this into A inverse. A inverse will come on the second position on the right side. We know the A inverse value, just put this values here. Take, put this fraction outside. Then first of all, multiply these two. From here, I will take the rows. From here, I will take the columns. So minus four, minus six. And then it will multiply with this column, zero minus four. So minus one by two is outside. So it become minus 10. This become minus four. Divided with the minus two. So you will have five. And here you will have two. 
So the value of the X is five two. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. Five two is the right answer, sir. So uh, my dear students, we are done with this question. Hopefully you understand. And so my dear students, uh, we have completed the May, June, 2020 uh, one to two paper. And uh, in this session, in this video, we have done uh, from question number 14 to question number 25. The questions uh, one to question number 13, we have done in, the, in another video and that has already been uploaded in my YouTube channel. That was, this was the second video on this paper. And I hope that this uh, video will help you to understand the concepts, the tricks, the procedures, how this is done. So if you find this video interesting and helpful to you and beneficial to you, please don't hesitate to subscribe my channel, like this video, share the link of this video with your friends, with your class fellows, with especially with your junior students and also subscribe my channel because uh, when you uh, like this video, you share this video, that's like a fuel, that's like energy for me. It's a great blessing for me to be able to help so many people around the world. It's a blessing for me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all.